So in this video, we're going to talk about a conclusion section and how to write a good one using the seed science project that we're currently doing as an example. Good conclusion sections start with a claim, a statement that says what the results say about the hypothesis that you predicted earlier in the lab report. What happened? Was it what you expected? Did you reject your hypothesis or fail to reject it? Notice the language there. You don't confirm or support the hypotheses because in science, we set out to actually test things in a way that we're trying to prove them wrong. So you say reject it or fail to reject it. But whatever you say must be backed up by the data that you have. You can't say something that you cannot defend with the data that's in the results section. But it should look something like this. The results reject my hypothesis that sugar would help plants grow faster. Notice the first part of the statement has a, says something about what the results say, and the second part restates my hypothesis. Let's see how that looks like in the example art that we've been tracking. Remember, we're looking at bean sprout growth with water at the different pHs, and you can see that the pH of 7 grew much faster and much more than the pH that was alkaline, 13, or pH of 3 that was acidic. And that is manifested both in the rate of growth and in the total growth at the end as well. So when you look at my conclusion section, I say the results failed to reject the hypothesis that if the pH of water uh, given to plants changes from the ideal 7, the plants will grow less. Certainly, I can defend that with the data. So that's why I can say it failed to reject. And the second part is a restatement of my hypothesis. After I do that, I move on to trying to explain why I think the results happened the way they did. The secret here is if you are... Um, if you match your expectation, you just go back to your rationale, borrow from there, and we use that here to explain. So basically, if you had a good reasoning on your rationale, it should explain why it is that the results happened the way they did. On the other hand, if you have a results section that, that kind of goes against what you expected, you might need to do some extra research to see if maybe your rationale did not make sense, or maybe if you know that you've had a lot of problems with your experiment and a lot of limitations. As long as later on you address those, you can blame it on that. So let's see how that looks like in this exemplar. The next statement says this probably happened because of the non-ideal pH affected the enzymes inside the seeds and sprouts and thus the plant uh, affects the plant growth. So if you see my rationale all the way at the beginning, it basically says the same thing. So I rehashed that for my uh, conclusion section. If I had not gotten what I expected, I would have said something, I would have done some research, found out why I was wrong, or if I had some serious problems on my experiment, I would have referenced those. Next thing you have to worry about is actually the thing that most matters for your actual cognitive skill score, which is using evidence to defend this claim. So if you go back to the exemplar, I'm going to try to use as much data, as much math, as much patterns that as I notice in my, in, in my results section as I can. And I do exactly that. This conclusion is supported by the data in my experiment. It clearly shows a pattern that as the pH is increased or decreased from the normal ideal of 7, the growth is diminished. The average growth for the final plants, and then I mentioned the actual numbers. Here's me referencing actual math, number one, averages. But then I don't stop there. I talk about, you can see in the graph, how the rate of growth is also higher. And I mentioned the actual rates. I actually do some math, I figured out the rates. And so I'm mentioning not just one math, but multiple pieces of data. And that's how you defend and do a really good job not uh, at getting um, a better grade because you mentioned more than one piece of data. The last thing is explaining the actual value of the evidence. Why is the evidence good? Why should you trust it? And you can see here that I'm saying this data is based on at least three trials tracked over two weeks. And that in addition, the pattern seen is clear because the lines of best fit are very close to each of the actual data points in the data, which is usually a good indication that your data is trustworthy. You can see how the lines of best fit are mostly almost all touching those points, nearly touching those points. And so as long as you can say something like I've done multiple trials over two weeks, or you can say that your best fit data is pretty decent, you can actually say, give a reason why you should trust your data, right? And uh, of course, if uh, you know of someone else that did the same experiment, you can reference that as well. But either way, if you have trouble analyzing your data, contact me and I'll help you out. That's how you analyze your data to get a good grade.